All right, what is up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to reduce fractions to simplest form, okay? And in the process, we're also going to figure out what the GCF is, also known as greatest common factor, All right? I know it sounds kind of complicated, but I promise you it's not that bad. All right, so first of all, just real quick, what's the point of reducing a fraction? Okay, so if I have two pies, right, and we're gonna say they're we're gonna say they're the exact same size and shape, okay? All I'm gonna do is cut this one in half, but this one I'm gonna cut into four pieces. Okay, so let's say I ate this entire half here, and let's say I ate this entire half here. Okay, so on the left side, there's two pieces, and I ate one of them, right? And on the right side, there's four total pieces, and I ate two of them. Okay, but can you see that in both cases, I only ate half of the pie, right? So I ate this half, and I also ate this half, right? So we can say one half is equal to two fourths, right? So reducing a fraction is basically just taking this and converting it to something simpler like that, something with some smaller numbers that are easier to work with basically. Okay, so how do we get it from two fourths, right, to one half? Well, all you have to do is divide the top and bottom by the greatest common factor, okay? What's the greatest common factor? That's just a fancy way of saying, what's the biggest number that goes into both the numerator and the denominator evenly? Okay, so if we have two fourths and we're trying to reduce this, What's the biggest number that goes into both of these numbers evenly? Well, that'd be two, right? So we divide the top and the bottom by two, okay? So what's two divided by two? Well, that's just one. And then what's four divided by two? Well, that's two. And there, ladies and gentlemen, your fraction is reduced, right? Because we got it to there. So in this problem, two would be our greatest common factor. This would be our GCF, okay? Because that's what we divided by. That was the biggest number that went into both the top over here and the bottom, okay? So we're gonna do a few examples and then I think it's gonna start making a lot more sense. Okay, so what if I had the fraction three over six? What's the biggest number that goes into three and six evenly? Well, that would just be three because three goes into three and six. Okay, so we would divide the top by three and the bottom by three. Okay, and then on the top, what's three divided by three? That's just one. What's six divided by three? That's just two. Okay, so we reduced three sixths down to one half. And three would be our GCF, right? Because that's the biggest number that can that's the biggest number that goes into three and six evenly, okay? So three is our GCF. Now, what if I had, let's do another one. The first two were proper fractions. Here's an improper fraction, okay? What if I had 10 over four? What's the biggest number that goes into four and 10 evenly? So in this case, it'd be two. So we're gonna divide the top by two and the bottom by two, all right? So what's 10 divided by two? Five. What's four divided by two? Two. Okay, can we reduce this down any more? No. How do you know? Well, one of your hints is right there, five. Five is a prime number, right? Five is prime. What does that mean? That means five is only divisible by one and five, right? It's not, not divisible, divisible by two. Okay, two does not go into five, right? Okay, so again, this is the simplest form we can get. And also, we divided by two, right? That was the biggest number that goes into both 10 and four. So this is our GCF. Okay, GCF is equal to two. Okay, so let's do another example. So I'm gonna give you like a little, a quick little rule here. So if you have a number that ends with zero or five, okay, it's divisible by five. So what do I mean by that? So if your number, for example, is 10 or 
15 or 100. 1,975, 2,570, okay? So as you can see, all these numbers end with either zero, right? Zero, 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 or five, 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 okay? So all these numbers right here are divisible by five, okay? They're all divisible by five. Okay, so if I gave you 15 over 20, remember, if it ends with a 5 or a 0, they're both divisible by 5. Okay, so if we can do 15 divided by 5 and 20 divided by 5. Okay, so what's 15 divided by 5? Well, that's just 3, right? And what's 20 divided by 5? That's 4. Okay, is this as reduced as possible? Yes. And again, what's a good hint? We have a prime number, so 3 is prime. It's only divisible by 1 and 3, so can 4 fit into 3? No. Okay, so 2 can fit into 4, right? 2 plus 2 or 2 times 2, right? That gives you 4, but 2 cannot fit into 3 evenly, right? So this is as reduced as possible. And again, this was the biggest number that could fit into both of them evenly, so this is our greatest common factor. Okay, so let's just do a couple more examples. Okay, so what if I gave you 28 over 14? So when the numbers get a little bigger, it's not always clear. But something that we can see is that both of these numbers are even numbers, right? Because this one ends in 4, this one ends in 8. And what are even numbers? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right? So this one ends in 4, this one ends in 8. That means they're both even. Something you can do with even numbers is just divide them by 2, okay? So... We'll divide the top by 2 and divide the bottom by 2. So what's 28 divided by 2? Well, that's 14. And what's 14 divided by 2? Well, that's 7. Okay. So is this as reduced as possible? Well, 7 is prime, right? But no, no, this is not as reduced as possible. Why? Because 7 fits into 14 evenly, right? How many times? Well, twice, right? So we can divide the bottom by 7, and we can divide the top by 7. So what's 14 divided by 7? Well, that's 2. And what's 7 divided by 7? That's just 1. Okay, so is this as reduced as possible? Well, we're really, really close. So we have 2 over 1, right? Which is the same thing as saying 2 divided by 1. Right? What is 2 divided by 1? Well, that's just 2. Okay? So this is equal to this. So whenever you have a 1 in the denominator, like we do here, you can essentially hide it, right? Because it doesn't change our answer. So we have 2 over 1, but remember, a fraction is just a division problem, right? So 2 divided by 1, it's just 2. So it doesn't change our answer. But there's times where we are going to want to keep the 1 in here, okay? Because when we get into adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing fractions, keeping the 1 in there is going to be helpful. But when we're reducing a fraction, if you have a 1 in the bottom, just hide it, okay? Because when we divide by 1, right, it doesn't change our answer. We got 2 at the top, so it's just going to stay as 2. Okay, and what was the greatest common factor? Okay, so first of all, we divided by 2, and then we reduced it to this, 14 over 7. But then we divided by 7, and then we reduced it even more, down to 2 over 1, right? So we divided by 2, and we divided by 7. So which one's the greatest common factor? 2 or 7? Well, we actually have to combine them. We have to multiply them together. Okay, so let me show you why. So we, ha we divided by 2 first, right? And then we divided by 7. So if we multiply them, 2 times 7, what is that? 14, right? So if we go back to the very beginning of the problem, we had 28 over 14. So at this point, instead of dividing by 2, what happens if I divide by 14? So let's divide by 14 on the top and divide by 14 on the bottom. What does that give me? Well, 28 divided by 14 is 2. 
And 14 divided by 14, well, anything divided by itself is just 1, right? 2 over 1, which is right there, right? So instead of taking two steps like I did here by dividing by 2 and then dividing by 7, I could have just divided by 14 from the very beginning. So again, the greatest common factor is the biggest number that goes into both our numerator and our denominator evenly. So in this case, it's not 2, it's not 7, it's 14, okay? So this is our GCF. Okay, so I'm going to do one last example that I think is going to clarify this just a little bit more for you, okay? So what if I had 32 over 56? How could I reduce this? All right, well, these numbers are a little bigger, so one thing I do know is that they're even numbers, right? Because that ends in 2, this ends in 6. So if they're even, I know they're divisible by 2. So I'm going to divide the top and bottom by 2. Okay, so what's 32 divided by 2? That's 16. And what's 56 divided by 2? That's 28. Okay, can I reduce this anymore? Uh, well, yeah, because this ends in 6, this ends in 8. So I know they're both divisible by 2. So we'll divide it by 2 again, divide the bottom by 2. Okay, 16 divided by 2, that's 8. 28 divided by 2, that's 14. Okay, can I reduce this anymore? Well, yeah, because this one ends in 8, this one ends in 4. So again, these are both divisible by 2. Okay, so what's 8 divided by 2? Well, that's 4. What's 14 divided by 2? Well, that's 7. Okay, can I reduce this anymore? Well, 7 is prime, right? So it's only divisible by 1 and 7. 7 does not fit into 4, 4 does not fit into 7 in any way, okay? So this is as reduced as possible. So what's our greatest common factor? Is it 2? Because we divided by 2 here, we divided by 2 here, and we divided by 2 here. But see how it took us 3 times to get there? So 2 is not our greatest common factor. Remember, we have to combine all these. How? By multiplying them together, okay? So just like the last example, we did 2 times 7, right? Because those are the 2 that we divided by. So in this case, we're going to do 2 times 2 times 2, right? We got a 2 here, 2 here, 2 here. We're just going to multiply them all together. So what is 2 times 2 times 2? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is equal to 8, right? So what if at the very beginning, instead of dividing by 2, Right, so I'll just rewrite it, 32 over 56. Instead of dividing by 2, what if I divided by 8? Well, I'll divide by 8 there at the top, divide by 8 on the bottom. Okay, what's 32 divided by 8? Well, that's 4. What's 56 divided by 8? Well, that's 7. Okay, so as you can see, our final answer is the same one from right here. Right? But it only took us one step. Right? And in our one step, what number was that? 8. So 8 is our greatest common factor. Okay, 8 is the biggest number that fits into 32 and 56 evenly. Okay, so if again, if you've got like a bigger number, right, that you're not really sure about, and then it takes you a few steps to get there, just make sure at the end you combine all these that you divided by, right? How? By multiplying them together. Okay, and that will give you your greatest common factor, right? Because that's the same thing as that. All right, guys, so I hope that was helpful, and I hope it cleared some questions up for you. Uh, if you still got questions, definitely leave them in the comment section below, and I'll try and help you out. We're finally going to get into adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions. Okay, so if you need to check that out, definitely check it out, and I will see you in the next one.